Oi, oi, Roger Retro Gamer. How we doing? You all right? Hope you're well. Um, a bit of a series I started up. Um, a little look at my history in gaming. Um, what I'd collected over the years, what I'd been playing, blah, blah, blah. Bit of a series I did. Um, giving me a good chance to have a little, little rant now and again. Um, and a chat. Um, an excuse to disappear up here, you know. Um, <clears throat> Vimto's on the go again. Um, kind of got forgotten a little bit. So um, I was looking through, and I don't often do it, some of my old videos. But um, and I realised I thought, I got to about 2016-ish. Um, and kind of left it there and forgot all about the rest of it. And... Um, kind of a, a, a bit of a pivotal moment for me around the 2016 mark um hold up mm. vimto's on the go hold tight hey my favorite cup <laughs> retro head geezer um so yeah around about 2016 onwards following on from my little uh my little rants and little stories um I was looking through the collection and I was thinking, do I need to collect absolutely everything? 95% um, of it don't get played, you know, um, or if it does, it's a quick 10 minute check. Um, usually I get my ass handed to me um, and then I think, fuck that, it's too, too frustrating, can't be doing with that. And so it goes straight up in the collection and there it becomes entombed. Um, and I started to realise, you know, you, you can't buy everything as much as we try when we're new to collecting. Um, and it's great, the, fr the thrill of the chase. But, um, yeah, so I started to look through. And I had pretty much every system from the Master System um, across all Sega consoles, Nintendo consoles, um, all the Xboxes, all the Playstations. Um... And it was just to a point that just, Christ, I'm going out a few times a month, um, hunting the games down. Whenever I'm out and about in a town or whatever, you know, you've got to go in all the shops and you've got to check them out, got to add to the collection and spending a fair old bit of, bit of dough um, and only be seeming to sort of tick a few off each list every month. And it was just like, Christ, this is burning, almost a bit of burnout, you know? pardon the pun, um, a bit of burnout that you just can't buy everything and you can't collect for everything. I certainly can't, don't know about you guys, but, um, and so it came to a point where I thought, well, certain consoles, I'm just collecting for the sake of it, you know? Um, and the first one that sprung to mind, um, was the Super Nintendo. Um, I had a SNES back in the day. I had a fair amount of games. Um, Love the console. It, it's tip top. Um, no one can deny. You know, it, it was cracking quality console. So many different genres on there. The pads are lovely. It's, it's just just brilliant. But um, I don't know. I was I was looking at my collection i've i've had to sum up whether i'm going to go for a cart only collection or a boxed collection and and sometimes you look at this or i look at this nintendo cardboard and i look at it and i think it's not in the condition i want it to be so then so many americans have these amazing sets and they're all racked on the shelves and they look pretty and it's just the cart only and i'll tell you what it's a bloody good way to go because you get the best of both worlds. You, you can play the game. You can still get your collecting fix. Um, looks lovely on a shelf. Um, so with the Super Nintendo. Um, I, I outed loads of it. Absolutely loads of it. That was one of the first ones I outed. Being a, more of a Sega lad. Oh yeah. <laughs> Didn't just wear it for that. Honest. <laughs> um, 
being more of a Sega lad, it was always going to be Mega Drive Master System 32X. They, they were, they're never going to go anywhere. And they really ain't going to go anywhere. Um, it's more about cart collecting for me. Um, and obviously Sega. That's, that's after the NES, Sega. Brilliant. Um, but I love the carts, you know. Um, so the SNES went. I had a Mario All-Stars box. Really nice boxed. Um, console, I had Zeldas, the Marios, the, the probably the top 30 games, um, all complete, and I had about 105 carts, and um, looking back on it now, I certainly sold at the wrong time, um, but I don't regret any of it, really, um, even though I've got another SNES console back, um, I don't regret any of it. I mean, I, I make sure, that's one thing I always do, is just make sure before it leaves the collection, I'm absolutely 100% certain it's not for me. That's it. I don't regret anything. And you really got to weigh that up because you know what it's like. Chances are you want to buy these things back. They're going to cost you a lot more money, become more scarce, and you may as well just fucking box it up so you can't even see it and literally tuck it in a corner and forget it's even there. Um, because if if there's a shadow of a doubt, don't get rid of it. Keep it. Chuck it aside. Box it up so you can't see it. Just keep hold of it. Um, so anyway, I, I made mine local. Um, I think it was about probably creeping towards 400 quid. I got for 105 SNES loose, loose carts. Um, there were some beauties in there. Some Bombermans, the, the Mario... Um, th there were some really good ones, and and he got a bloody good deal out of it. I got them out of the way. Um, the money coming handy, I put it to good use. It's long spent now. Um, and the the snares, the box stuff, I sold and traded a few bits as well. Um, and it kind of worked out really well. Uh, I remember that's, I think that's how my a snares box console and a, I think two or three games. I traded in, and one of the games I got was Final Fantasy IV on the Mega Drive, which is, I've got complete, absolutely lovely, mint, beautiful. And obviously, with Sega going up in price, so that was timed really well, because to buy that now, I know that's probably, I think, some of the boys have bought that for Sega Zombie, and I think that was going for around about 200 quid. So that ain't bad. Um, not that it's... Anything up here is not about value for me. Um, what I need is about value and uh, <laughs> uh, fuck it. almost criminal what the what the prices are now but um so the snares collection went and then I'm looking through and um I hadn't long had the collection up in the loft and I've, I've just started a obviously I keep an eye on things and everything's absolutely brilliant this loft although it can get warm and it can get cold, it's not to the extremities. So, um, but what I did notice was my Sega Saturn collection. Now I had about, I had about 70 or 80 games for the Saturn and a quite a nice boxed console of the Mark I and then a box console of the Mark II version, which has got slightly different, if I remember rightly, the buttons on the actual console are a slightly different shape. And there's a, something about it, but anyway, so I'm looking through, keeping an eye on it, and they were all sort of on the shelves, lined up, like that sort of thing. Um, and I did notice the old, a few people have mentioned it over the years, the old the old box wobble, where the, the front of the cardboard box, the, the sort of, the artwork, if you like, started to go a bit, almost as if it was... I don't know, but maybe moisture on there, or but nothing else has been. Um, I mean, some of this gear's been up here 15 years, and it's as good as the day it come up here. But um, the old satin stuff got the old box wobble. I thought, oh, shit, can't be having that. Um, so that was another thing. And, and also, every now and again, I like to get a console out and have a little blast. And um, I got, got a satin out, and... Um, well, it didn't read discs, and I'm thinking, what the Christ is all this about? Good old YouTube, um, help me out a good one. Um, I'm not technical by any means. If I've got a broken console, 
I'll give it away, trade it away, but everyone will know about it because I just, I, I don't know how to fix it. I, I don't want to bodge it up or what have you. But um, I had this Saturn console and on YouTube it just said, it's usually what spins the disc at the top. Open it up, reset that, because that's probably what's, it gets either loose and it goes higher or, or no. I think it's when you push it down, that's it. You push it down and it it pushes. Anyway, I fucking don't know. Anyway, I had one console that buggered up a bit and I managed to fix it. And I just thought, with the old box wobble, with the consoles are a bit... I'm not overly into Saturns because I didn't have one back in the day. My cousins did, Danny and David. Um, and I remember t playing a few games, Daytona and Clockwork Night and stuff. Fucking love them games. But, but for me, there was no in a nostalgia there that you know i had them and i had to have them again so um that's 70 odd games um again got sold traded off um the couple of consoles traded off got rid of um not for great deals of money um a lot of them were standard fodder but um i did have things like um guardian heroes and diehard trilogies and stuff and um what else do I have? Uh, Street Fighter movie, and um, which actually went to Top Hat Gaming Man, I think, locally. Um, yeah, so so they went. Um, the next on the hit list was Dreamcast, and uh, I've never been into Dreamcast. I remember having a quick goal one years ago, and I can understand the appeal because to look at the games, I mean they're. For the time, they're almost arcade perfect, the ports. Um, but I weren't that keen on the controllers. I just, it's not for me. Each to their own. So the Dreamcast collection, I had about 20 odd games. Um, some, some good ones. The Shenny Moos. Shenny Moo. Uh, one and two. Um, sounds like an 80s group, doesn't it? <laughs> Shenny Moo. One and two. <laughs> um, have him toes hitting me hard today, I tell you. Um, had the Shenny Moos, the Power Stones, Resi Evil, the few Resi Evil games. Um, yeah, so I had a, a, a fair collection on that. And that lot went as well, um, which which helped me sort of knuckle down and, and collect for certain things. Um, and I, I can't, I tell you what, I can't... Um, I can't sort of say anything against doing that. I mean, it's it's well worth doing it. And let me have a quick swig. If you look at the bigger picture, you're doing the community the world of good because you're freeing up games that you're not overly that interested in um, for other people to collect. You know, and if you can work out a couple of trades, happy days. So, um... So the SNES went, the Dreamcast, the Saturn. Um, what else went? I don't think there was much else that went. Oh yeah, Mega CD stuff. Um, I had a Mega CD. I had both versions of Mega CD back in the day, the one and two. Um, but for me... The nostalgia is there more for the 32X. Anything Sega, cart-based, fucking love it. But um, Mega CD, there's some good ones on there. Sonic CD, uh, Final Fight had that as well. I didn't have Snatcher. Um, RPGs are not really for me. But um, I kind of feel I was just getting the games just, again, just to collect. You know, it's retro. Got to get it. Um <coughs> and you know I've, I've not made a dough so you know um, to fine tune that out do away with that lot and concentrate on what I do want so um, so the Mega CD collection went um, trying to think of what else now um, this is a bit of an off the cuff video not really not that I ever put a great deal of thought into my videos but um, what else Oh yeah, Christ. I'm just looking at the PS2 that's thinned out to probably 150, 200 games now. Um, 
I'd built a hell of a collection up of PS2 games and it was about it was somewhere between six and seven hundred games and um hell of a collection so much tut in there honestly so much tut in there a few gems but um so much tut so most of that went you know i mean i was buying games a bag of games and a console 30 quids and you'd come away with bloody loads anything i didn't have was just going up one up in here in the loft on the shelves but um and that's that's one thing i don't really do now i'm not buying games to just add to the collection like bundles and stuff because it's just endless and then you end up picking up a console that you haven't got and then you collect for that and spirals on you know <laughs> keep going <laughs> so um so yeah the collection of ps2 stuff went down from about six seven hundred to i cut it down to about three or four hundred i think it was um and i've cut it down again since and i've got probably about another 50 or so up there that I'm going to look to um, trade away and, and do something with, um, you know, so. So the, the great coal of the collection happened. And I'll tell you what, it's the best thing I ever did because then I could concentrate on Master System games, Mega Drive games, 32X. So that was my Sega. You know, that, that's my Sega, the dream team of Sega, if you like. Um, then I've got NES, um, cart collecting. So it's NES, UKV labelled, GBR labelled, or Codemasters games. Um, and the reason I say labelled is, is because on the label it has to have UKV or GBR on there. It is PAL, PAL region, but it's got to have those on there. And trying to find a lot of them games is a bloody nightmare with UKV. Because it's surprising how many games are, are French. So it'll have FRA on it. But, um, and the SNES went, so it was N64. And I loved the N64 initially back in the day. I was fighting that fight till the death. That, you know, the PS1 or the PlayStation was just going to be another 3DO or CDI or one of them fucking consoles that will be here, here one minute, gone the next. And carts, you know, what they can do with a cartridge, no loading times. The graphics are more sort of complete because I'm, I'm sure you all know PlayStation games, uh, the old polygon graphics, you go up against some of the walls on games and you can see through the wall where the, where the polygons sort of weren't complete. So that was my main, that was a, <coughs> that was a big sort of, um, a big point that I would always bring up. Come on, look, look, look at Super Mario 64, you know, you, you, it's complete, it's, you know, spot on. <sighs> How wrong was I, eh? Christ. <laughs> so, N64, now I go N64, um... Boxed if I can get the main games. I mean, if if I can get the main sort of, I don't know, maybe a hundred games boxed, and the rest carts, I'm happy day. So I mean, the only one I want now um, complete is Paper Mario, and I've I was utterly disappointed with that on um, other consoles. It's not my thing at all. So um, so yeah, so that N64. Um, and the next one I got rid of was GameCube. Now, GameCube went at a time I had a couple of consoles. I had a really nice, um, the Silver Edition with Mario Kart, I think it was. Mario Kart. Yeah, it was Mario Kart, maybe Mario Kart and Zelda. I know I had the game that was Mario Kart and it had the extra Zelda disc. And then I had the Zelda with the the... the one and two anyway i had about again i had about 40 50 gamecube games and a couple of consoles including the game boy player thing and i never liked that game gamecube controller um and i've never really played mario sunshine i play it for or back when i had all that i played it for a sort of quarter of an hour 20 minutes and it just didn't 
it didn't um, it didn't feel as good as Mario 64. So um F0 was was a bit good though. <laughs> um and I just thought most of the better games that I like um are all on the Xbox or PlayStation 2 anyway. Um so I did a lot of deals with that to get better games on the um on the Mega Drive at the time. Uh, I think that's how I got my Turtles Hyperstone Heist and some other games by getting rid of all my GameCube gear. Um, and actually did a fair bit with the money that, that come back. I mean, a lot of that then went back into the collection, but um, didn't just get rid of it to, you know, fund the collection only. Um, seemed to always be buying games anyway. But um, so, yeah, so still got Wii nice Wii console um, and that's one the Olympics one with um, I must have I don't know 30 games maybe 30 games on the Wii maybe 30 to 40 games um, and quite recently I realized a few of them are sealed so um, I must admit with the Wii collection I do like playing it and it's it's certainly got a place um, but I think that might be that might be something. As I've got a few of the games sealed, I'm not going to be playing them. Um, not through, you know, worrying about the value or anything. It's just I'm not in any rush to play those. So it's not really... They're just going to sit there. Still sealed. So, um, so it might be a case of that lot goes. Because um, I'm more Xbox and Sega. You know, and a bit of Nintendo in the early days. So um, it might free up a bit of space. Means I could get some more Japanese Famicom games and stuff that I've now got into. Um, which has been brilliant. I mean, I ah, love the artwork. Um, love the fact it's a fresh new collection. Um, and it's here to stay. Uh, I do want a Super Famicom boxed nice console. So... Um, I mean, in an ideal world, it would be nice to see someone that's got a Famicom boxed console that's nice, a couple of games, and I'll swap my Wii collection. or we'll do some sort of deal. That'd be nice. Um, I'll have to have a chat with Ali. Um, although it just means as and when he comes around to finding a nice console. You know, um, he doesn't get many Jap Famicom games in there, but um, he gets most other things. Go and see Ali. We have another shout out for Ali. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I culled an awful lot of stuff down. Um, so that was sort of 2016, 2017. Um, and just continued with the collection really. Um, trying to play games um, in the boys room. I mean, before he was born, we had the N64 in there. Then it went to the blue Wii console. Um, now he's got an Xbox One, so he's covered for gaming. I do want to get him an, a, a, an original Xbox so that we can have um, coin ops in there as well. So it can get him, I've got to raise him right. Bit of retro, bit of retro. Um, in, the in our bedroom, we've got the coin ops Xbox. Front room's got a PlayStation 4 Pro um, and my Xbox One. So, um, we kind of got enough to play on and just every now and again get a console and have a little blast through. I mean, I've, I've certainly got a newfound love for the for the Master System. And it's a console I, you know, I only had one game for, Mortal Kombat, back in the day. And um, so it's it's been lovely collecting them. And I'm not, I'm, I'm trying not to get pranged out by the fact I've only got a certain amount of games to get to finish that set, you know. But, um... It don't matter. I've got plenty to play. Happy days. So, um, so yeah, um, I did go on a bit last year. Um, I did. It was watching that Alex Nintendo Arcade. who's an absolute diamond guy. He really is a lovely bloke on his videos, and I've obviously never met him, but I've watched so many of his videos. And he kind of got me into collecting NTSC 
um, American SNES stuff. Um, and that collection didn't last too long because I, I got a little bit frustrated with they weren't readily available. You know, you'd look on eBay and there'd be top end games that are almost unattainable, certainly for little old me. Um, or there'd be games that are just fodder that you really wouldn't bother with. And it's, you know, I, I wanted to get the nice platform ones, the basic ones, you know, nothing too flash, but just a nice collection. And his collection was ama absolutely amazing. And it's great to see he's, he's got his little barn arcade um, looking absolutely brilliant. And um, and now he's getting back into the collecting for the snares and, and getting back to back to his roots um and all the best to you alex absolute top guy um and cyber snake jay and watching his collection i mean he's got another absolutely cracking collection um of ntsc so it's just you know wow it's something new headstrong into that and i and i ended up with must have been about 15 games or so um never did get an ntsc console but I was just, and then I just thought, it, I was kind of a bit burnt out with it. So um, I sold all them off throughout last year. Um, I didn't lose out on anything. It was, it was, it weren't, um, I weren't bought with a view. It was an investment, but um, certainly sold it for at least what I put into it. So happy days. Didn't cost me nothing. <coughs> and who knows? You know, it could have could have really turned into something and I could have ended up with a bloody collection of thousands of games or hundreds of games. Um, and it's, as I say, it's nice to see Alex back on form because he's looking at NTSC and Super Famicom ones now. And, and I'm really going great guns with that. And I'm loving just looking through. And he showed a book on his, um, on his latest video um which has got the artwork for the famicom games so um that's something that already the other halves i'll get you that for christmas that's a great christmas gift so um so that's on the list to get so um so yeah um we had a switch bought a switch it must have been two years ago we bought a switch and i went headlong into that thinking oh yeah brilliant it's great um played it me and the boy played lots of Mario Kart on it and we played lots of um, Smash Brothers but and I bought loads of games for it I mean when we bought it it was in Smith's um, walked out of there after spending four and a half hundred five hundred so got the console and a good few games with it um, enjoyed it it was all right but um, it just sat there, hardly ever used. The boy was always playing the wrestling um, or his kart racing on, on the Xbox, um, whether it be crash racing or whatever. And this time last year, um, during all the lockdowns and stuff, and it just sat there. So um, basically sold it all off. I mean, we had, cool, it must have been... Nearly 30 games on the Wii. Yeah, must not Wii. On the Switch. Um, must have been nearly 30 games. Nothing crazy. Never went in for that sort of, um, you know, limited run releases. But it was all the, all the good stuff. And just sold it all off. For no real reason. And it was just sitting there. Um, it must have been about six months after getting the console. Um, got the old controller drift. So had to send that off to Nintendo. But, I mean, it promptly came back after about a week, all repaired or whatever they'd done, or they'd swapped it for a new one. Um, and they put another six months on the warranty. But, so happy days. That was good. Um, but I just didn't get use. So so that lot went. And um, money went into other stuff, as it usually does. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Up until now, that's kind of where I'm at, really. Um, got more PS2, PS3 games to get rid of. Um, I'm divering about the Wii, getting rid of that lot. Because um, if nothing else, I could use the, the shelf space to put put some other to it. Um, 
and that's about it yeah um i just want to kind of maximize the collections i'm going for so as i say it's master system mega drive 32x then we got nez super famicom n64 um the wii <laughs> then we got playstation 1 playstation 2 playstation 3 I'm going for everything and anything on the, on the PlayStation. PS2, PS3, it's only the, the odd games that I like. You know, it's it's only the ones that I like playing. So, Grand Theft Autos, God of Wars, your mainstays, you know. Um, anything a bit funky or a bit not really down that I'm up for. I'm particularly seeing stars. Um, all that sort of caper is going to be going. Um getting rid of a few on the uh on the ps3 as well um and obviously ps4 is the other half so buttercups buttercups little collection um and then it's obviously going for a full set on the xbox um it's been good to have a bit of a sort out because the 360 um it just shows me that I, i've missed out on an awful lot of games well i did up here, I did have a like a Billy bookcase, but just a standard thickness one, so you could only have one row of games. And um, I thinned out an awful lot of 360 games because they wouldn't fit on the bloody shelf. And now I've sort of opened it up and I've got a bit more shelf space. I'm thinking, Christ, there's a lot more games I could add. <laughs> so, um, and I've noticed you go and see X and places and you don't see them as. I mean, certainly Clacton one, but in a lot of CEXs and that, you don't see 360 games like you used to. Um, I mean, your PS2 games, you used to see them absolutely everywhere. And again, they're, they're starting to get the same. You know, a lot of us crazy collectors chucking them away in the in the man caves or the, or the lady caves. So, um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. I, that brings us up to the present day. Um... <coughs> I'm in a, a, a funky, different sort of part of the part of the loft at the moment. I did look over quickly my last video, and there was this bird chirping in the background, going absolutely fucking nuts. It was like I was in um, Game Zone bird room, but um, but no, I wasn't. Um, I actually <laughs> actually had found a, a bird a little bit after doing the video. I was. Um, sat around and I just felt this I thought what the fuck is that I thought something was falling down on me you know and um, it was a little bird somehow a bird had got up here I, I think I had left the hatch open at the hatch <laughs> to me bird cave um, I'd left the loft door open so where and the front room windows and all that were open so whether it got up here that way or a little nook in the in the corner of the loft somewhere somehow who knows but frighten the bloody life out of me and there was me little old me crawling around trying to pick up this bird without hurting it and then it's going from one side of the loft to the other and and then i'm getting a sweat and i'm thinking fucking jesus what am i gonna do here um anyway eventually got it down and um set it free so uh did me bit that day did me good deed but um but yeah, that's what all that chirping was in the background in the in the last video that, of this story mode, you know. So, <laughs> so Christ, did frighten the life out of me. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. That's my story with regards. If you've if you have seen any of the uh, the last episodes um, and followed me on the journey, um, it's a hell of a journey. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And um, long may it continue. Um, I mean, moving forward, it's going to be more about the playing the games. Um, I'm at a position now where I've got, I think, we, we, me and Buttercup totted it up the other day. Um, and we totted it up, and I think there's about, there's about 3,000 games I've got currently at the moment. Um, she did laugh because way back in the early days, I, did a um did a database or, and she helped me with that and listed every game and it was uh, whether it was boxed with manual um 
and condition, I would put sort of one out of ten or whatever, yeah, whether depending on condition. And um, looking back, <coughs> and that was way before I stopped and culled a lot of my stuff. And um, there was 4,000 odd games on that then. Um, I think it was almost 4,000, way, way back then. And I'd got probably another, a good at least 500. <coughs> 500 or so different games and um, when I say different it's because with my collection um, they're not the same I haven't got any um, platinum games they're all black label they're all single release I don't have any doubles I don't have any variants I don't have any American versions um, of the same game they're, they're all just original release games um, that goes for everything from N64 to absolutely everything. No Platinums, no Classics, no no none of that. They're all just the original release games. So um, so it's a fair old few. Um, I'm just looking down at the Xbox One. Um, I must have, I think it was a little Harry, Harry X has got, I think he's got about 40 games. And I've got about 100 and, 100, 140, I think. I think it's about 140. And there's some real absolute bangers on there. Um, it's The Xbox One is kind of my... It's the only console I have all the time in the front room, set up, ready to roll. And that, that's mainly because that's my go-to console. The best controller, <laughs> the best runner games, tailored for me. So in my choice is the Xbox One, but I get those games not really as a collection, because unfortunately, I'm well aware one day, although Xbox does look after us, you know they do their best, Microsoft. Um, but one day, a lot of these games, when you buy a game now, it's almost they could just forget the disc and just put a bloody code in. Because most of the game, you've still got to download it, or you've got to download all the patches for it. You know, so that disc that's spinning round, gradually wearing out that hard drive, is is only like a, a key to open the door, and then all your all your extras are added and downloaded and fucking fuck knows what. So, you know, um, I'm really put off with this new sort of, you know, um, download it. I'm not tech savvy at all. Um, so that's, I get the games that I'm going to have a blast with, whether it's for a, two hours, 20 hours or 100 hours in the case of Forza Horizons and whatnot. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. So I'm enjoying a bit of room Tetris, trying to, you know, keep it a bit presentable up here. Um, there's bags of took round the other side, so um, I can't really get round there to to do me vid. Um, so yeah, I mean, moving forward, I'll try and keep up with some content. It's not going to be manic on pickups because, like I say, you know, it's getting few and far between the games that I do need. But hopefully, I can do some some of this video play. You know. There's a thing, eh? Bit of chit chat over the top of some video play of of playing games. Yeah. <laughs> so um anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you've stuck it out this far, you're a bloody saint. Um anyway, take it easy all. Enjoy your gaming, enjoy your collecting, whatever you're into. Um, and happy days. See you later. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.